Would you like to use self-managed FAS or functions as a service solution? How about functions without vendor locking and without Docker file and without Kubernetes knowledge and without all the other complexities that we have today? Just functions in your own clusters. When self-managed serverless solutions are concerned, Knative rules. It is likely the best solution one can pick in need of uh, containers as a service or CAS flavor of serverless. It can be a self-managed solution in your Kubernetes cluster or a managed solution in cloud like, for example, Google Cloud Run. Nevertheless, Knative can be a bit of a challenge to use. You need to build container images, you need to set up scaling rules, you need to do a bunch of other things. Arguably, Knative is one of the easiest ways to run applications in Kubernetes, but it still requires certain level of experience. Actually, saying Knative is misleading in itself, because everything I said so far applies to Knative serving and eventing. And I'm not talking about those today, at least not directly. If you're not familiar with those, check out this video. Now, Knative also has a third component called Knative Functions. And the motto of functions is, hey, how about we get rid of all that complexity and say, I want to have a function. I want to write my functions, I want to run them locally, and I want to run them in permanent environments like staging and production. Do not give me any of that Kubernetes nonsense, do not make me write Docker file, do not ask me to do anything, but write code and run my functions in my own laptop or in my infrastructure. And that's what we'll do today with Knative functions. It is not Knative serving, it is not Knative eventing, at least not directly, though still run in the background, it is about self-managed functions. So, let's start from scratch. I installed Knative serving and Knative eventing and whatever else is required. And now I would like to work on a function and I'm going to start from scratch. I do not have anything, even a Git repo with any sample, nothing. The only thing I actually did was install a CLI and the instructions how to install it yourself and everything else I did to prepare for what I'm going to show right now is in the gist and the link to the gist is in the description so go and check it out. Wait, stop. Let me tell you about this video's sponsor Zit. Zit simplifies quite a few things. It helps with deployment and management of our applications packaged as container images or serverless or Helm charts or application templates. It allows us to easily run databases like MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB and Redis. And on top of that, it has native infrastructure as code framework support through Terraform, CloudFormation or Pulumi. So if you need help with running your applications and managing your applications and underlying infrastructure, you should check out Zit. And not only because it's helpful, but also because by checking them out, you would be helping this channel. Now let's go back to the video. So I'm going to create a function and I'm going to use Go for that because I like writing code in Go, but it works for other languages. I'm going to talk about them later. For now, let me execute something like Funk. I want to create something based on language Go and that something, that project, that function will be called Knative Functions Demo. As a result, a directory with the same name was created for me and some files were put there. So let me go into the directory. Let me see the into Knative Functions Demo directory. Now the main file, the one that matters the most is Funk YAML that has a bunch of things. Uh, some, most of them are empty and they will be filled in later when we start using those functions. Um, in most of the cases, you do not want to change much of the things over there in that file. They will be populated automatically. What you do want to select 
early on is the build packs we are going to use by default since this is go it's using go functions build pack that might not be the best one but we'll get to that later and also invocation is set to http there are other types of invocations but in most cases you want http and if I list all the contents of the newly created directory, you can see that there is nothing special there. There's just the source code of my function, which is handle.go and handle test.go. The latter is for testing, that's obvious. And that's about it. Source code, readme, and func.yaml. That's all it takes. So let me open handle.go. Uh, doesn't matter if you're not using Go because the logic is more or less the same, no matter which language you choose and in it. There is, in this case, a function called handle. That's the one that will handle incoming requests to this function. And inside of that function, I can write anything I want. Uh, and in this case, it is invoking another function called pretty print. I'm going to change that one just to show you that the code can be anything you want, more or less anything you want, as long as it's function appropriate. So I'm going to replace what's in pretty print and just return a string, a single string that says a silly demo with knative functions. And that's about it. I probably need to delete one of the imports there. Go is picky about not having imports that are not used, but that's about it. I can save the file and exit. Now, typically, once you start writing code, you want to start running it locally on your laptop or maybe remotely. I'm going to do it locally right now. It could be remote as well. And just see whether my function works as expected. And I'm just going to run it. Uh, I do not have anything running on my laptop. There is no Docker. There is there is Docker actually, but that's a separate story. But there is no container engine of any sorts running right now. I'm just going to execute func. I want you to run my function. And since this is the first time I'm running that function, I want to build it as well. And the registry I'm going to use is in environment variable container registry. It could be any registry you want. And it starts. It built my image and it started. It run the function on port 8080. And now I can open it in a browser and there we go. My function is running, it's accessible, it's running locally, and I see the message, a silly demo with knative functions. As you can imagine, running functions locally is only part of the story. The other part is running functions in permanent environments, like production. And to do that, we need to build a container image that will be used to run that function and later on run it. So let's start with building. I can build my container image that contains the function by executing func build and then the address of the image and that's about it and it will build the image remember i'm not using docker file there is no docker file here it's just building the image i will explain later how it does that the important thing you should know right now is that building images works only with docker podman or if you want to build them remotely with tecton Depending on what you're using, that might be the right choice or it might be limiting, like I prefer NerdCuttle, but it doesn't work with NerdCuttle. And in remote environments, I prefer Kaniko, it doesn't work with that either. But if for you, Docker or Podman for local building and Tecton for remote building is okay, then you're in the right place. Now, let's see what we got by executing Docker image ls and you can see that apart from other images I have in my local Docker engine, there is vfarsic silly demo. And that one is 107 megabytes big. That's huge. That's massive for 10 or 15 lines of Go code that compiles to a couple of gigabytes, actually not gigabytes, a couple of kilobytes binary. Now, the reason why it's so big is because the default pack or builder uh, that is used is not really the optimum one. But the good news is that behind the scenes, uh, Kennedy functions are using build packs and you can change the pack you use for something slimmer, something shorter. If you're not familiar with build packs, check this video. Build packs are great or not so great, depending on how you look at it, what you use it for. Anyways, you can reduce that image. Just remember that by default, 
it is building massively big images and that's probably the first not not probably the first downside uh, at least out of the box negative thing about Kennedy functions another thing that I would like so this is a additional feature I would like to see is that when it created the directory with all the files I would have liked if there was an option to use alternative ways of building images maybe using docker file instead of build packs uh, personally I would like that more but nevertheless this was meant to be extremely easy and easy it is so now let me deploy my function to the production environment and I'm going to do that by saying func I want to deploy something in the namespace production and I'm going to deploy it by executing deploy command as a result it will build a new image I could have specified that I do not want to build a new image or I could have skipped the build part before and just go straight for deploy because by default deploy function will uh, build the image as well and then it deployed it somewhere where that somewhere is is what we're going to discuss later what matters for now is that the last line of the output gives me the address through which I can access that function so let's see that let me open that address in a browser and see whether my function is really working there we go my fancy 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 hello world type of function is deployed it is running in production and I can bet that this was probably the easiest possible way to develop functions at least when self-managed functions are concerned and in the background it is using Knative and it is using all the good things about Knative you know scaling to zero scaling up scaling down all the networking and the TLSs all the good things but in a very very simple way there is probably no human on this planet that has any coding skills that cannot develop and manage functions by himself or herself and that is the real value of Knative functions it's extremely extremely easy and straightforward and there are a couple of other things we can do with func cli we can for example invoke it by saying function or func uh, this is the namespace production invoke the function and then we get the same output i got from browser but this time from a terminal we can also list all the functions in a namespace there we go or we can what else can we do yes we can see the info about that specific function all the information there's not much to it but the information is there or we can delete the function and that's about it there's not much more to it and that's a good thing simplicity is the key uh, motivation behind Kennedy functions so let's talk about pros and cons and whether you should or shouldn't use Kennedy functions and so on and so forth so this is I'm, I'm going to start right away by saying Kennedy functions are awesome for certain type of audience for people who want to develop functions and they want to run those functions locally and in self-managed mode so this is not really competing with uh, google cloud run or azure container apps you know managed functions not managed functions managed serverless because azure container apps are not functions uh google cloud run is not functions lambda lambda let's say so it is not competing with lambda it is competing with other self-managed solutions and we can write functions in uh, quite a few languages we can use go we can use node.js uh, JavaScript, we can use Quarkus, uh, Java, and Spring Boot, also Java, Python, Rust, and TypeScript. And I think that more languages and more frameworks are coming along, so I think that this list will grow over time. And the functions are doing all the good things we expect them to do, uh, especially if you're familiar with Knative in general. Functions will scale up and down depending on the traffic and do all the good things you expect from functions and more. Now, have you noticed that today in this video I have not mentioned Kubernetes even once? Now, function was running when I deployed it to production environment that was Kubernetes, but from the user perspective that's completely irrelevant. Kubernetes is in a background, it's transparent, it's in implementation detail. It's there, I used it, but you probably did not even know 
that I had Kubernetes, that I had Kubernetes, that I deployed it to Kubernetes. Today, I did not execute a single kubectl command except for the setup. So the setup part requires uh, Kubernetes understanding and knowledge, you know, but that would probably be done by sysadmin or ops or SRE or DevOps in your company. As a user of functions, there is no relation to Kubernetes. For Knative users, and I must stress this one more time, for Knative users, Kubernetes is an implementation detail. It is invisible. And that's especially true since Kubernetes is not the only way we can run those functions. It can run in Kubernetes, it can run in OpenShift as well, which, well, it's Kubernetes as well, but it can run on local host. And when you're running it locally, you do not need to have local Kubernetes up and running. So, Kinetic functions are absolutely amazing. I love them. There are a couple of negative things. Um, documentation is not really extensive, and especially on how to create packs for Kinetic functions, because that cannot use any build pack pack. Um, and the other thing is that it works only with Docker and Podman and Tecton if you want it. But um, I, for example, do not use Docker. I use Nerdcuttle. Other people might use other solutions. And I would have liked if this was really made uh, irrelevant or if it would work with any container image because what is really required is to build container images. And Docker and Podman are not the only ways to build container images that could be Knative or in my case, locally, uh, that would be Nerdcuttle and then remotely Knative. But so that's uh, that's a downside. It works only with a couple of uh, container image builders. For majority of people, I guess, majority of people are probably not that concerned about really running Nerdcuttle and like the Docker or Podman and that's great. And then you're in a good place, assuming that when you hook it into pipelines, you know, Jenkins or CircleCI or uh, GitHub Actions, you can also run um, Docker or Podman or Tecton. If those three, one of those three is okay, you're golden. Now let's talk about pros. Actually, this will be a very short list of pros because it's awesome. It's simple, it's easy, and most importantly, it does not require Kubernetes knowledge. I mean, somebody should know Kubernetes because every once in a while things go wrong and then somebody needs to debug it in the Kubernetes cluster where Kubernetes functions are running. But for day-to-day -day operations, no Kubernetes knowledge or experience is required. So, all in all, Kubernetes functions are developer-friendly. It's brilliant. I love it. And you should use it if you, if there are a couple of constraints or a couple of reasons why you should, or requirements for you to adopt Kubernetes functions. First of all, if functions is what you want. Not everybody uh, needs functions and not all applications should run as functions. But if that's what you want, you're on a good path. And if you do not care much about Kubernetes or you don't want to care about Kubernetes, then this is brilliant as long as there is somebody else in your company who does understand Kubernetes because things sometimes go wrong and then you need to debug it, then you need to dive into Kubernetes. And finally, if you do not want uh, a managed solution or if you cannot afford many solutions like Lambda and similar services. So all in all, use, adopt Kinetic functions if you want functions, if you do not care about Kubernetes itself, you don't want to dive into Kubernetes, but somebody else does, and if you want a self-managed solution. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.